Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a teardown of the new InMotion V8F, but first I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of my thoughts on ride quality, first impressions, things like that. So let's get started. Some of the things I like about the V8F compared to the regular V8, the thing that stands out to me immediately is firstly the power. It feels like a little bit more powerful than the V8 somewhere in terms of V10. Like others have described it as a mini V10, that's similar to how I feel in terms of just power output. Also, something that stands out to me right away are these larger pedals with the grip tape on them. Um, but overall, I feel like the ride is nice. Um, I think the increase in battery capacity will definitely help in terms of safety, because bigger battery capacity, even if you don't use it all the way or even if you don't go top speed, it's always nice to have that safety margin. Alright, so we're going to be disassembling the new InMotion V8F. So the first step when disassembling wheels is usually to take off the pedals. This is the first difference between the V8F and the normal V8 where these pedals are a lot larger. And you can see that they have grip tape mounted on top of the rubber, whereas the original V8 pedals are a bit smaller and they have only grip tape. So to do this, we're gonna take a size five bit and you can do all of this using T-handles. I'm just gonna be using a, a drill and my security bit set in order to make this a little bit easier and faster. So the first step is just to take these two grub screws out from the sides of the pedal. I'm just going to be placing them in here for ease of use. And then on in motion wheels, you're also going to want a size five hex in order to remove the little collar that's located on the bottom of the pedal hanger here. And after that, you can go ahead and take something like this. It just needs to be a long, thin piece of metal. And you can sort of push, or if that doesn't work, sometimes you might need a hammer. So I've just got a hammer here. And you can see that after a bit of hammering, we should be able to just pull this out by hand. The reason that might happen is because when that set screw is put in, it leaves a little indentation on the pedal axle, which can sometimes cause some resistance when removing the axle. So you might not always need a hammer, but in some cases you may. And after that, you can go ahead and take the pedal off, being careful to save these two collars here. I'll put those off to the side and put the pedal off to the side as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly remove the pedal from the other side. I'm going to be doing the exact same procedure. All right, so now that we've done that, what we can do is you will find two screws right here on either side. We can just go ahead and take a Phillips screwdriver and unscrew both of those on each side. So similarly to the V8, the way you remove the outer shells on the V8F is by rotating them counterclockwise. But before we do that, we want to make sure that the little flap over here is open or else the shell won't be able to rotate. So we open that flap and what you're going to want to do is with one hand grab the handle and with the other hand you want to sort of be pushing against this pad that way to sort of get that counterclockwise rotation. And once you do, you can see it turns a little bit. And then you should be able to just remove the shell like that. And I'll just set that off to the side. So now I'm just going to do the same thing for the other side. You can tell the control board side and the other side apart by the presence of the trolley handle. The trolley handle is going to be on the side without the control board. So I'll just do the same thing, opening the flap. So when you're taking the outer shell off on the trolley handle side, you want to make sure to release it slightly and sort of pull it up just a tad. So this will allow the shell to actually rotate because when the trolley handle is closed, this plastic portion actually prevents it from rotating. So once those clips are undone and once the trolley handle is extended just a little bit, you can grab the main handle with one hand, rotate just like the other side, you'll hear a click and then you can remove the shell. 
and you can just slide the shell over the trolley handle like this, and then you can remove it. So internally, this wheel looks very similar to the regular V8. The process for taking out the trolley handle, if necessary, is identical. What you're going to want to do is remove these two screws, these two Phillips screws at the bottom first. And then there are four more Phillips screws up here holding the top of the trolley handle in. After those are released, you can go ahead and just take the trolley handle out. So the trolley handle is removed. If you need to do maintenance on your control board, you can do that on the control board side. So in order to actually access the control board, there are four small Phillips screws, one in each corner of this panel that covers the control board. So we're just gonna take our Phillips again, undo those. And here we have the control board. If you were doing a tire change, all you'd have to do is disconnect these four connectors that go to the motor. So if you want to disconnect the phase wires for the motor, first we're going to want to disconnect the battery as we usually do before doing electronic work. And then we just want to hold down the power button to discharge any residual charge left in these capacitors. So after we've done that, what you're going to want to do is just remove these three phase wires. And then you can disconnect this hall connector right here. So in order to remove the tire and the pedal hanger assembly from the shell, there are going to be four screws per side holding it together. And these screws take a size four hex bit like we used earlier. So I'm just going to unscrew those and put those aside. I'm just going to go ahead and do the exact same for the other side. So to finish removing the tire, we're actually going to need to remove these flaps that we looked at earlier. So the way you do this is the flaps are actually secured on the left hand side. So what you're going to want to do is just apply some pressure from the bottom up and that should come out and then you can slide it away. This rod may be stuck in this portion here so you can just take that out. And here we have one flap. So I'll just put that off to the side. For convenience, these flaps should probably be removed before these four screws are removed on both sides just because that's how the disassembly process goes on the regular V8. So I'll push up here. Sometimes it might not push up in this case. So what you're going to want to do then is grab hold of this part of the shell with one hand and sort of pull it in the opposite direction of the flap. So I'll just pull that way while also applying upwards pressure and we can see that it came out. So here we have the other flap. I'll put that aside too. So now, after removing these four screws on both sides, we can stand the wheel upwards, make sure to have one hand on the pedal hanger, and one hand on the shell. We can pull up on the shell, and the shell will come apart from the motor assembly. So here, we have just the motor with pedal hangers attached. I'm just going to set that off to the side for now. All right. So now you should be left with the V8F minus the motor and the wheel. So if we go back over to this control board side here, next what we're going to do is actually remove the battery. So to do this, we're actually going to have to take off small portions of the LED strip. So if you can see right here, we're actually going to have to just take this, peel it off a slight bit, take this one on the opposite side, and then peel the top off a slight bit, because what we're looking for is to actually remove just enough so that we can leave enough for this battery compartment cutout to come through. 
So after that, all you're gonna have to do to remove the battery is just remove these two Phillips screws right beneath the center of the battery. So aside from being connected to power via this connector, the battery is also connected to the control board via a connector. So what you're going to want to do is follow this connector coming from the battery compartment down to the control board. And it is actually this bottom connector right here. So what you're going to want to do is just remove that connector by pushing down on this top tab and sort of wiggling it out of place. And one last wire that's connected here is this balance charging connector. So we're just going to unclick that. And now all three connectors coming from the battery are disconnected. So at that point, what you can go ahead and do is stand the shell upright. And on the battery side, you're going to want to cup your hand next to the battery here for when it falls out. And you just sort of want to tilt the shell onto the side and you'll feel the battery starts to fall out of its compartment. And once you can grab a good hold of it, you can sort of see how it's come out of its compartment here. You can sort of just grab a good hold. You may need to pull these wires through a little bit more. And if you wiggle it back and forth, you can see that the battery has now been removed from the shell. So next we're going to be removing the control board. Disconnect these connectors. These blue ones up here go to the LEDs on each side. If the LED directions seem reversed, when you're putting it back together, all you have to do is just swap these two around. So one difference that I've come to notice on the V8F versus the V8 is that InMotion has actually used some sort of silicone adhesive sealant to keep the control board in place. And this prevents you from removing it in the same way that you would from the V8, but this is actually a big bonus for waterproofing. So while you don't have to remove the control board in order to remove these other cables, it might be beneficial just for ease of access, but it's still possible to remove these connectors without removing the control board. So I'm just using the same method of pinching the connector down and sort of wiggling it out of place. You can do this on both sides. All right, so now all connectors have been removed from the control board. And we can see that like the V8, the LED strips are preventing us from the move removing these plastic portions here that actually enclose the wires so that they can go from one shell half to the other. So what we're gonna wanna do is continue to peel back the LED strip in the locations where this plastic strip is. So we're gonna wanna peel it back just enough to be able to take this piece off. So the outermost layer can just come out like that. And the innermost two layers can be removed by, by lifting up on this wire connecting them here and sort of just very carefully prying them up from their positions and removing them. So we can see now that this is out and we can lift this plastic piece up here and put it off to the side. I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. And we now have full access to the wires going throughout the shell. So if you need to replace things like the brake light, the speaker, the headlight, or the lift cutoff handle, what we're going to need to do is first take off these two outer shell portions here, and they are held in by three Phillips screws on each side, so six total per piece. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so now that you have those screws removed, much like the V8, those can simply be slid horizontally out of place. I'm just going to set these off to the side. So once those are removed, we can see that we now have better access to the battery indicator. 
and the charge port, as well as the tail light, power button, and headlight. But in order to actually remove these elements, we're going to have to split the shell in half. So first, what I'm going to do is just remove pieces of tape that are holding the shells together. So those pieces of tape can be found, firstly, right above where the tail light sits. And don't worry about reusing these later. These can be replaced with black electrical tape or any color electrical tape. These adhesive strips do seem to be longer and stickier than what was found on the V8. So that's always nice to see. When removing the tape above the tail light, be sure not to accidentally separate the layers of the tail light. Make sure that those are held down while the strip is removed. These layers actually help the tail light diffuse and look more uniform when it's projected out through the back. So that's the first piece of tape, and the second piece can be found right below the battery indicator. So if the strip proves too difficult to remove by hand, or if you don't want to peel it off, you can take an X-Acto knife, extend it just a little bit, and then you can actually see the border through the tape, and you can actually slice the knife along that border. You're actually going to have to do this with the knife as well for the little seal that InMotion puts around the battery indicator and power button. So we'll just take one slice at the top here and one at the bottom, being sure not to damage any of the components. And there we have it. So the last piece of tape that InMotion uses to secure the shell together is actually in the battery compartment. So if you see down in here, there's actually a piece of what looks like black duct tape that's been put down in here underneath the battery in order to ensure that no water gets in through the wheel well up into the battery and possibly even into the control board compartment. So what we're going to want to do is just remove that. And this can later be replaced with duct tape, gorilla tape, anything that provides a similar effect. All right, so once that's finished, we can now begin removing screws to split the shell. So the two inner shell halves are held together by one, two, three, four screws per half. And all of these screws are going to be located on the trolley handle side. These screws do take a size 2.5 hex bit. I don't have any bits that reach far enough down into the shell, so I'm just going to be using a size 2.5 hex T handle to remove these. Alright, so once we've removed all eight of those screws, the shell can now be split. So a couple things to be wary of when splitting the shell. The lift switch at the top is spring-loaded, so be sure to keep an eye out on that when splitting the shell. And how I'm actually going to do this is just by staying it upright, remove any screws that look like they may fall out that are holding the shells together. Actually while I'm here, I might as well just remove them all at once. So to do that, I'll just make sure I'm in a position where the screws will fall directly onto the table and tilt the shell down. And now the screws have been removed. All right, so once those screws have been removed, we can actually split the shell. So to do this, we're going to stand it upright and sort of by beginning at the top, we're just going to pull apart at the two halves, depressing in the lift switch. And when they begin to come, come apart, we're going to release on the lift switch. 
And if we notice that it's difficult to pull apart, we want to check if there's still any adhesive pieces left, and we can see that the power button adhesive is actually keeping us from splitting the shell. So we're just going to take a knife, split that right down the middle, and now we can continue to split the shell. So once the shell gets to a certain point, you can see that the spring-loaded lift switch is going to want to come out. So just have your hand ready to catch the parts that come out for that. It may take a little bit of maneuvering on both sides to actually remove the shell. And here we can see that the lift switch actually has two springs, one per side. So we'll go ahead and set that off to the side. And you also may notice that these little pieces come out. These are part of the lift switch too, so we can set that off to the side as well. Ah. So the reason it might be difficult to pull apart the shell on the V8F is because InMotion has actually included a bit of silicone all along the inner bead. As you can see, there's sort of a goop-like substance in the seam where the two shell halves meet. At some point you will notice that the silicone reaches a tearing point and splitting the shell in that portion will become much easier. And once it's completely split, you can see that we have now split the shell. So these two wires right here go to the other LED strips on the trolley handle side. If we want to, we can simply Pull those through, and since there's no critical components actually attached to the trailer handle side of the shell, this can actually be set aside. So now we're left with this, which is just one half of the shell, and this is going to house all of the components. Yep. So we can see that, like I described earlier, InMotion has actually put a bead of silicone around the heatsink, keeping it in place, and that is what is actually making it a little bit more difficult to remove that control board. So today I'm not going to be removing the control board, but if you were to replace the control board, all you would have to do is take something like an X-Acto knife or razor blade and just slice along the silicone on all four sides of that edge, and then you'd be able to just pry the control board up and out. So now is when we are able to start taking off individual components. So at this point, if you have, let's say, a faulty headlight, the headlight can simply be slid out of place and unclipped. Put that off to the side. If we have a faulty battery assembly, that can be taken off and unclipped. If you do decide to unclip it at this end of the connection, and not at the control board side, you are going to want to keep track of these wires and make sure not to lose them because these actually connect the headlight to the control board. And if they're not connected on either side, they can just fall loose like this. If we want to remove the charge port, we can go like this. And you can notice that some of these wires are actually routed through holes in the shell. For example, the charge port goes through this small slit in the shell right here. This is actually made so that the shell halves can stay together while still allowing wires to go through the inside of the shell. So we want to remove the charge port. We can simply take it. Now on the V8F, I'm not sure if this was done on the V8, but these wires are held together by a zip tie, which is nice to see some cable management in there. So if you're replacing only one of these things, you're going to want to take some cutters, for example, scissors, I have a pair of zip tie snippers right here with me, but any scissors should work. I just want to snip that off, being sure, being very careful not to actually slice any wires. And now the wires can be separated. So continuing with our removal of the charge port, that can just be pulled out, and if it snags, we just massage the connector on the other side. The charge port is now removed. So this port actually connects to the port we saw earlier on the battery. So on the battery, this is the main power output. 
This is the portion that actually talks to the control board and lets the battery control board communicate with each other. And this is plugged directly into the charge port for charging. So I'll just set our remove charge port off to the side. Next I'll remove the tail light module. The solder joints on the tail light module are somewhat fragile, so be careful not to rip or damage those while removing it. So I'll just set that off to the side. Next I'll remove the speaker module. That just slips out like the other components. The speaker may come detached from its plastic holder, but that's considered normal. So we'll just take that wire out and I'll set that assembly off to the side. Next we can take off the lift cutoff switch that can be removed. Just like the other components and I'll put that off to the side. If there are any small plastic tabs left in here from the lift stop switch assembly, we're going to want to take those out and put that with the switch. Now this white piece of rubber silicone here likes to fall out, especially when you're trying to put the shell halves back together. So if possible, it would be best not to disturb it. And we can see that the only wires we have left are these two wires coming from the LEDs which actually slot into these little grooves for reassembly right here so that they lead back up into this channel. And these two wires used for connecting the power button battery indicator assembly and the headlight. So we can remove those, put those off to the side. We have finished the disassembly of the V8F. All right, so after tearing down the V8F, there are not too many differences from the regular V8, but there are some things that I think a lot of people will really appreciate. The first thing that I noticed is that the shell height has actually been raised a little bit over the regular V8. So on the normal V8, it would come down a bit farther and that might lead you to scrape it on things like lower rocks. But on the V8F, they've actually brought that up a little bit to avoid some of those issues. Changing a tire on this wheel is more or less the same as on the V8, but it's actually very easy. I like how InMotion just has four screws holding in the pedal hangers on both sides and then the wheel can just slide out. I really like it when wheel manufacturers integrate an easier way to take out the wheel for a tire change as opposed to do, having to do something like splitting the shell just to change the tire. Cable management. So I like the way that InMotion has routed their cables throughout the shell and made it a lot easier to reinstall things after having done a full teardown. I feel like the rebuilding process after the teardown was a lot easier compared to some of the other wheels I've done, so I really appreciate that. The weatherproofing on this wheel might be one of the best instances of weatherproofing that we've seen on the EUC market so far. Um, to start off, this is a battery from the V8, but it has a similar enclosure on the V8F. I really like that they took the extra time to encase this battery and put a little bit of silicone where the wires come out. I think this will really help in terms of long-term durability. Some other instances of waterproofing that I really like to see are they have included silicone on the inside of the wheel well so that stray dust particles or water won't get up inside of the wheel. They've also used silicone to seal in the control board, which is really nice because part of the control board, much like the V8, sticks out into the wheel well for cooling. And they've also included, like the V8, a strip of tape beneath the battery. So in case something does manage to somehow get inside the shell, the battery has a double layer of protection right there. So I think it's really good to see that. And I think this wheel is seriously impressive in terms of the weatherproofing measures that it's taken over previous generations of wheels. All right, so thank you guys for riding along with me on this teardown of the V8F. I hope you enjoy it. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe if you like this video. And we'll see you next time.